if we can get people to realize, Tennesseans to realize, there's a vast difference in hemp and marijuana and the, the two plants, and, and, and there are way too many regulations, federally and statewide right now, on a simple plant called hemp. And uh, going forward in the next couple of years, if we handle this right, 10 years from now, Tennessee is going to have a massive economic boom if we handle it right. If we stifle it with all these regulations that are unneeded, we're, we're going to struggle and we're never going to get there. So I hope going forward that they'll take some of the comments. This former Marine, that, or the, the Marine, the elder gentleman, he got up and spoke. He, he, was, he was dead on. That, that this is not marijuana. This is a wonderful plant that God gave us that we can use a lot of vast different ways. So yeah, we, we don't want to go too many regulations. I don't want to stifle it. Right, right. Um, expect that the people will be growing hemp in Tennessee next spring? Yeah, I'm excited about that. I know that the Department of Ag told me that a few people have already applied for some uh, permits to be able to grow it. And I, 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 I think in the next couple of years you're going to see hemp growing all throughout the state. And, and like, we need to realize that we were the number one state in America for growing hemp before World War II. So uh, I'd love to see us get back there. See, the, the Secretary of, of Agriculture has asked the Justice Department in Washington to separate marijuana from industrial hemp. Right now it's all in together. If they would do that one thing, that would make our life a lot simpler down here. If they would just separate industrial marijuana from, I mean, marijuana from industrial hemp, separate the two in the code in Washington, make all the difference in the world. Well, I appreciate this huge turnout, a lot of interest, and uh, I think the uh, department should have gotten the message that the people don't want a lot of rules and regs. And the people ask me, they say, why did you put the, give them the ability to put the fees on this thing? And I said, well, it's simple. We had to make the bill revenue neutral before we could get it passed. We couldn't pass the bill if it had a fiscal note. It's going to cost the state anything, the governor would play. So we had to make it revenue neutral. We had no time intended for the Department of Agriculture to get rich on it. We want their fees to just barely cover their expenses. And over time, as more people get involved, their fees should decrease. You're okay with the starting point of what the fees are right now? I am because you've got to get started. You know, we've got to get started, and I think the fees are higher now than they'll ever be in the future. I think as time goes on, as more people get involved, fees will go down, and hopefully we can abolish all of these and turn it loose. So the thing you've got to remember industrial hemp has never been illegal. It's never been illegal. You could go to Canada and buy a truckload and sell it on the market square. The only thing that's illegal is letting farmers raise it. So it's almost like a protection issue. Uh, this, this bill was passed to protect the Canadian farmers from honest competition from American farmers. And like I said, at one time Tennessee was the number one hemp producer. Uh, we produced the hemp for the Confederate Navy back in the Civil War. Long history of hemp.